they say he stirs his coffee with They say he stirs his coffee with tactical K-bar chopsticks using the Vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of his coffee at the molecular level. And they're right. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, coffee. Nice. Nice. Cool morning. And uh, hot coffee perfect together so we're going to talk about business but we talked we're going to talk about uh, family to relationship right 100%. why is why is that important in this you know, without you supporting your family none of this is worth it nor can you really do it you know you you really have to balance that out so we'll have a lot of speakers including myself and my wife who my wife is my soulmate uh I, that that woman walks on water but it's still it's it's still work and there's strategies and forms in relationships to make sure that you fall deeper in love every single day and that you make that work really Treat her like a celebrity, and she will treat you like a fan. Whenever I see videos like this of people that I like, I'm not making fun of them. I'm not busting them. I'm not exposing them. I'm not... But I want to teach you. Whenever I see men talking like this, I always, always track down the wife on social media to see what she is saying about her husband. And it's never the dynamic equivalent of what he says. I have seen the richest and most successful men I know simp. You know, you got simps at one end and pimps on the other. No pimping, no simping. You know where you need to be? Right in the middle, right here. Unbelievable. Some guys never learn. Some guys never. I just, I just sit back quietly and I just watch, watch guys placing their wife, their girlfriend up on a pedestal. There's entire YouTube channels of guys punking themselves, self-deprecating, not trying to teach a lesson, but the humor is at their expense. These are the same guys that, like, every anniversary, every, you know, Valentine's Day. I don't know what you see in me all these years. I don't deserve someone like you, an angel like you. And then, I, of course, I go and look at what her social media says. Zero. Goose egg. Zip. Nada. Zilch. Nothing. Bro. Bra. Bra. Nothing. Keep saying that you don't deserve her, and guess what? One of these days, she will believe you. So if you get anything from this, stop self-deprecating. Especially to a woman who's unpleasable which is 99% of them. Don't believe me? I once knew a salon assistant, you know, the hair wash girl, shampoo girl. She made more money than the stylist. She was one of the best kept secrets in the salon. I used to chat with her. Hot steamy towel on the face during her tingly shampoo massage. Essential oils to help the customer relax a little bit of a stress-relieving neck massage, a 10-minute coconut oil deep condition under the hair dryer. She consistently made $60 to $70 an hour, <clears throat> drove a super nice car, a simple, classy, white BMW convertible, dressed and groomed very practically, bought a beautiful townhouse, 100% customer experience centered. She made $10 an hour as a wage, but $20 to $40, three to four times an hour in her tips. So what's your excuse? Right? People pay to get treated well. People pay well to get treated well. It's awesome. Don't grieve the spilled milk that you got from a cow that you never bought. Little play on the saying that uh, why, why buy the why buy the cow when you get the milk for free, right? And then remember, like, don't cry over spilled milk. Well, I kind of put those two sayings together. Don't grieve the spilled milk that you got from a cow that you never bought. If she leaves, it's bye bye. Have the funeral, the funeral. 
throw out everything she ever gave you. I don't care what it is. Throw it out. In the trash. Literally, in the trash. Better yet, burn it. Just have a dig a little hole, put everything in there, squirt some lighter fluid on it, and just like set it afire. Just get rid of everything. Delete all the girlfriend and wife porn on your phone. Delete all the pictures, the videos, everything. Just get rid of it. You have no idea how freeing that is. It's almost like a hot air balloon. You know, it's got those sandbags. What do they call that? Ballast. And when you get rid of those sandbags, all of a sudden the hot air balloon rises. Kind of reminds me of your life. Memories and sentimentalism are a trap for most men. They will keep you on the ground. You will not elevate. Have the funeral. Cut the ropes. Get the sandbags off. You'll be over it soon. Just suck it up. You'll be over it soon. You will. It's a fact. The unpleasable woman is a topic that men who like women need to talk about. Now, men who don't like women, that's not a topic. And if you're a guy like me and you like women, you need to talk about that with other guys. I have found that most women are fairly unpleasable. Most modern women. That's why they go through so many men. I look at every relationship, I look at it this way, every relationship has an expiration date if you do nothing. If you do nothing. Both people have to work on the relationship. Now, if it's too much work, it's really not worth it. Then you just need to shake hands and part. And of course, it's easy for me to say this in my 60s now, that my give-a-damn level is very, very low. My tolerance for nonsense is low. I don't need any I don't need any more female friends, even like female friends. I've just kind of started titrating them out of my life. I used to hang out with a lot of women and just don't do it anymore. And I, you know what? I've never been happier. It's weird. No woman, no cry. But like I said before, I haven't had problems with women in years. Why? Not because women changed, but because I changed. If you don't like women, change your attitude. You don't have to be a prick about it. Remember last week? Like, you don't have to be a dick about it. You don't have to, like, just constantly talk about your dislike for thoughts and e-thoughts and this girl and that girl and this hoe and, the, oh, you know, that's 304 and all this kind of stuff. I'm not saying they don't exist. But, you know, the people who are telling you to not engage with women, all they do is engage about the topic of women. I don't talk about it very much. When I do, it's very pointed, it's very direct, it's finite, it starts, it stops, but I don't just week after week, day after day, it just gets so damn tiresome. It's old after a while, you know. Be resolute. Be decisive. Know where you're going to go with your engagement with the opposite sex. Make the decision ahead of time. Don't fall in love like it's a damn accident. You know what you fall into? You fall into ditches. Isn't it funny how we use the same language for an accident that we do for love? I fell in love. And then another guy will say, you know, God, what happened to you? And he goes, oh, I fell into a ditch. <sighs> there are some parallels there. So stop trying to please women. Stop it. Stop it. You know, I know some people that go as far as saying, I, I don't even hold a door for a woman. All right, whatever. I mean, I hold doors for everybody. I don't care. If someone is like within 10 feet of me as I'm going into Wawa, I, I hold the door. I don't want to be a dick about it. Just because I just, you know, I find that there's like little things that kind of come back to you. I'm not a big karma guy. I'm more of a sowing and reaping kind of guy. But I find that when you're generally nice to human beings, human beings are generally nice back to you. I'm, I'm the guy that's at an intersection telling people at the other stop signs, go ahead, go ahead. And you know what happens? 
when I need a break in traffic, I get it. And I'm not talking about manifesting or woo-woo bullshit here. I just find that when I give breaks, I get breaks. Is it the universe? Is it God? Is it like... I, I don't know. I have no idea. But I find that when I am just generally nicer to society, society is nicer to me. And that includes women. That includes men. That includes the elderly. That includes everybody. I'm the guy that just says good morning and hello to everybody. Naturally. I just do it. I make eye contact with people. Good morning. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. Hey, have a great day today. You know, like if you say that to somebody, make eye contact, not just like the automatic, hey, have a great day. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Like, you know that like bullshit small talk. I mean, really make eye contact with people and do that. It's a mate. You might make someone's day. Not that your world revolves around making everyone's day, but I find that if you generally are friendly, like I said, to society, to people within your sphere, whether it be the gal making the coffee at Wawa or someone who's 10 feet behind you and just holding the door for them. And they go, thank you. And the proper response is, you're welcome. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Just like little exchanges like that make life nice. In the sa and when you start stacking those nice little experiences, it just makes life nice. In the same way you can stack negative experiences and then just think life sucks. So look for like the little things. You're not gonna have you're not gonna win the three hundred million dollar lottery. But you can stack little wins, and those little wins do add up over a period of time. Something to think about this morning. Spending more time with co workers of the opposite sex than you do with your spouse is a recipe for disaster. Just remember, 80% of all affairs begin in the workplace. I'm not even going to go back down memory lane, which is actually nightmare lane, and comment on things that happened in the workplace with me. Those days are long gone. But the reality is this, is that if you're exposed to other people more than you are your own girlfriend, your own husband, spouse, the reality is this, is that you develop an affinity for people who are nice to you because, you know, your, your mate could be in a bitchy mood and just be going through something. That's the reality. And then you get to work and then someone smiles and says good morning and is nice to you. All of a sudden they just appear a little bit better. So be careful of that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. In a few Camping with Steve, the Steve Wallace, W-A-L-L-I-S, YouTube channel. He up uploads a video last night. This is, this is a trip. He uploads a video last night. And, like, I'm watching it in real time as it got uploaded. In less than an hour, he got 40 thousand views and over 1,000 comments and thumbs up within the first hour. Now, let's see where he's at now. It's 4.31 a.m. right now. 4.31. I got up much earlier than 4 today, unfortunately. Last night I was watching House of Pain and Cypress Hill videos. I know I don't look like I would listen to that stuff, but can you believe that's like 30 years old? Can you believe that insane in the brain and jump around are 30 years old? I can't. Oh, there we go. God, come on. Overnight, overnight. Twenty five thousand views. Twenty seven fifty three. Two thousand seven hundred fifty three comments. Just overnight, not even twenty four hours. Holy crap. One point two 
six million subscribers. You know, he does this for a living. He was an HVAC guy. I believe he was like heating and air conditioning and that kind of stuff. Now he does this full time. God. In less than an hour, he got 40,000 views. Now, the next morning, 25,000. No, I'm sorry. 200, 25,000, hold on. Rewind the tape. 25,000 thumbs up, 250,000 views. 11 hours ago, it was uploaded. Holy cow. What the heck are we doing wrong? Yikes. Wow. Wow. Amazing. When your woman has a corporate job and travels for her job, you are her side piece. Bro, bra, bra. You are her little side man. How do I know this? Now, I know there's a couple guys out there who have, and, and you respond to me every time I talk like this. And I know who you are, and I get it. I get it. And I respect you. And, and you know that you've been longtime followers. So, But in my, in my insecure playboy days, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start saying that. I'm, I am just going to start saying that. In my insatiable, insecure playboy days, I told you that one of my favorite places to go is hotel bars. You know, there might be a band playing. You can have dinner at the bar, whatever. Drink your seltzer water and lime, that kind of thing. And that was just like fishing in a stocked pond. It was like just an opportunist's heaven. And what happens there stays there. And I regret it. I do. I regret it. Some people don't. Some people like, you know, wearing their notch count on their shirts and doing videos and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. You know, bragging about how many women you've been with, to me, is like bragging about how many drugs you've done. All you're doing is showing how much of an addict you are. Was I a sex addict? No. No. No, but I was, I was definitely filling some void somewhere. I was maybe a pleasure addict. Maybe that was it. Single men, if you couple up with a woman of the world, you will complicate your life. And years from now, you're going to be like David Byrne from The Talking Heads and say, how did I get here? How did I get here? Stop trying to save women. Just stop it. Stop it. Some guys will call that Captain save a -ho. I think that's a funny phrase, Captain save a -ho. Or like a white knight coming in to rescue her. No more rescuing. You will, you will no longer rescue women. That ain't going to happen. For every divorced dad out there who's experiencing or has experienced parental alienation, I want you to know that you're not alone. There's a lot of guys who went through it and they survived. Me being one of them. It's sad and it feels hopeless, but your job now is to build yourself up. Your world doesn't revolve around your kids. You find that out in a damn hurry. Do all you can do, but never give up on yourself. Never give up on yourself. I've always wanted a boatload of kids. I, I mean, I literally wanted six to ten kids. I got three kids. I wanted six to ten kids. And I just didn't have the situation to make that happen. So, what are you going to do? Am I going to go back and start making babies now? That ain't going to happen. And what fertile woman wants an old man, right? Who's only going to live like another 30 years? Twin Turbo says, I wrote an email to you years ago, George, and said your channel is among the very few that I would actually recommend to another struggling male. I found many others to be cringe in their approach and felt it would reflect poorly on me if I were to send someone to their channel. That was a nice compliment. Oh, by the way, the shirt today, sponsored by BR Moving in Philadelphia. If you have a hat and or a shirt that you would like to feature on the Daybreak Show, 
private message me. I'll tell you how you can make that happen. It's simple. It's simple. It's probably going to be the best advertising for you to have your hat and or your shirt on the Daybreak Show. It's a simple, easy way for you to sponsor the Daybreak Show, for me to make a couple dollars and pay some bills, but for you to also get out there. So if you are in the Philadelphia area and you need to move anything from a one-bedroom apartment all the way up to a full house or anything, call BR Moving. Talk to Sam. Tell him I sent you. I'll put the link in the number down below. Give Sam a call. Here's a motorcycle buying hack. <laughs> if, like if you're on Craigslist or, or uh, like Facebook Marketplace. In the motorcycle section, don't just search for the kind of motorcycle you want, but put divorce in there. The word divorce and do your search. Or the word wife and do your search in the motorcycle section. When guys start saying, the wife, wife says the motorcycle has to go. Wife says I have too many toys. Wife is making me sell it. Divorce forces the sale of this. I need the money. Whatever they want, you can offer half of that. Like I, I'm looking at this, this magnificent Ducati right now, a scrambler. $6,000 or best offer. The ad reads, bike runs great, low mileage, modified exhaust, lights, and handlebars. I'm selling because my wife, blah, blah, blah. He said. He literally says, blah, blah, blah. $6,000 breast offered. Show up, show up with 30 crisp $100 bills. Put it in his hand. This is what I can offer. He will take it. But the fa it's almost like he's getting punished for even mentioning his wife, or divorce. Just stop it, dudes. Stop it. People are going to take advantage of you. Stop it. But if you're looking for a motorcycle, people need cash, man. People need cash. Cash is king. I saw this picture. shows a father on a wide glide Harley with his daughter, who looks like she might be five. And then the same dad on the same Harley with the same daughter, and the daughter looks like she's 25 years old, like 20 years later, in front of their house. Dad's gray, he's got the gray goatee in the second picture. I looked at that and I thought, I'm not crying, you're crying. Just very sweet, very, very sweet. Same dad, same daughter, same motorcycle, it's beautiful. Raise your hand if you're checking your bank accounts more than usual just to check and see if your money is still there. What the hell is happening with the banks? There's, there's nothing, nothing normal about this. We're sending $200 billion to Eastern Europe not to fight a war, but to pay somebody off. Let's get real. People are getting rich with what's happening. But they're making you take sides and they're dividing us comrade. How do you think these banks are dying? People, when, you, when you start doing the research, you start seeing that people are taking dividends and withdrawing large amounts before these banks crash. Is your bank going to crash? Do you have your money in Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and more? They're toppling like dominoes now. Remember grandma used to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right there is a good example, right there. Can you imagine your life savings just disappearing? <laughs> Amazing. Charles Manson never personally killed anyone, yet was convicted of first-degree murder. What? That is true. So, who exactly did Brian Koberger, the Moscow-Idaho college student killer, who did he watch on YouTube? And all I did was start searching Brian Koberger and Manosphere together. He might not know anything about digital footprints, but he hangs out on the toxic Manosphere side of YouTube. Yikes! 
Idaho murder suspect may have disclosed key details of killings. Internet sleuths believe accused killer Brian Koberger may have posted on the dark side of the manosphere. What? Yikes. So investigators are all over his Tinder right now. They're looking for his Tinder. But all roads lead to YouTube. What was Brian Koberger's YouTube watch history? That's what I want to know. Who were the content creators that inspired him, pushed him, nudged him? What YouTube channels literally pushed this guy over the edge where he killed four people, three, three gals and one guy, college students? And then he fled to Pennsylvania, just north of here. He got apprehended here, brought back to Idaho. I'm hoping that they find his watch history and they pinpoint the influences in his life. Like I said, Charles Manson never personally killed anyone, yet he was convicted of first-degree murder. Who did this creep, this spurgy-eyed, dead-stare douchebag who needs his goddamn nose flattened who did he watch on a regular basis? Who? That's what I want to know. How many men married a woman on Lexapro, the psychiatric medication Lexapro, and now have stories to tell? Write me, gb at georgebruno.com. Tell me your stories of your wife on psychiatric meds or girlfriend. Do you have any psychotic, mentally ill girlfriend or wife stories? Courts don't usually look at that stuff because they really are pro-woman in court. Any guy who's been to court for divorce or custody already knows that. You're already guilty before you walk in the damn door. Oh, a little possum just came up on the deck. Cute little thing. God, they are so cute. I mean, they're like so ugly that they're cute. <laughs> Nocturnal creatures. That, that, of course, is going into my, I don't know if it's going to be a booklet or a video that I called The Minefield. If a woman is on psychiatric meds, you need to find out before you get yourself involved with her in any form or fashion. And the reality is, almost half of American women are on psychiatric meds. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, bro, bra, bra. But Captain Savaho thinks he can deal with that. Really? In days of old, a young man paid more to the father and worked harder for a virgin. But that part of history is suppressed and is sexist, isn't it? Virgins were literally worth more money. A father knew that if a young man came into his daughter's life, he could get more for her if she's a virgin. And still, there are men paying top dollar for used merchandise every day. Are you one of them? So right now the monks in Ukraine are going to be ousted from the seminary and caves and catacombs by the satanic, manipulative, entitled shitbag Zelensky. Lord have mercy on these monks, these guys who dedicated their life to prayer and service. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But it's not the first time that Bolsheviks have tried to oust men of God. History repeating itself over and over and over again. But you can't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I was watching, I was watching a video with uh, Father Josiah Trenum, and I thought to myself, where was he when I was like 14 or 15 years old? And then it occurred to me I'd probably never listened to him at that age. I guess I had to go out there and make some mistakes. A gal, your girlfriend or wife, can take your gifts Go on a romantic getaway weekend one week, and then the next week tell you that it's over. 
And nine out of ten times, she already has another dude on deck, like a sleeper cell, just waiting to be activated. Oh yeah, and 80% of all affairs happen in the workplace. Just a quick reminder. I was talking to a guy this week who got a better job and created a situation in his family where his wife didn't have to work outside the home. And that was a point of pride for him. And that was awesome, where he created that scenario where his wife doesn't have to work. I mean, it's not about keeping her barefoot and pregnant. It's not about that. It's about protecting the family. Some people will call it mate guarding, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like women like do this thing where he, he had such jealousy. He's a jealous boyfriend. He's a jealous husband. Well, rightfully so, because at work right now, there are two or three men at your wife or girlfriend's job that want to fuck her. One of them just wants to do it passively. The other one is making the moves, complimenting her, talking to her, meeting her in the lunchroom, traveling with her. Don't believe me? You know what I do for a living? I work with men. You know how many stories I've heard in the past 40 years? Any idea? I lost track. But you're different, aren't you? You're different. The complicate justify cycle is amazing. Men complicate their lives and then justify why they did it and it just goes around and around and around. Then you get so many, it becomes like an onion, just layers of complicating and justifying. And then finally he taps out, blaming the world, blaming women. Blame yourself, bro, brah, brah, look in the mirror. That's who caused the problem. I am sore as hell from my workout yesterday. I did a couple extra things and did uh, most of my movements super slow, like three to four count. The bench press was literally unhook it. One, two, three, four. Don't bounce it off the chest. Controlled. One, two, three, four. I think I did 12 reps, super controlled, to the point where I couldn't do one more. Couldn't even do one more. I remember when just like loading the plates up was like a thing. Now, I put one plate on each side, one, two, and I'm sore, more sore now than I ever did when I used to like stack all the plates. It is not about how much you move, not about how much weight you move. It's about how you stress the muscle. And this body is just kicking into gear. The muscles are just like, you can't really see anything now. I will tell you this though, that shoulders and arms are the easiest things to develop. Easiest. Traps, back, uh, just really, the hardest thing is the belly. You gotta reduce overall body fat. You know, like I'm not ready yet to inspire you with a full body shot. I mean, most of my pictures now are gonna be like, from bottom of my chest up because right now my shoulders and arms are you know really nice and pumped and in shape they feel good but i still got that it's weird when you when you had a belly and you lose weight you you have like this uh when you're a little bit older versus younger you end up the skin doesn't bounce back like it used to so you end up like with a wrinkly crepe paper kind of kind of thing around your belly button, around there, like a saggy kind of skin. I will tell you this though, what, one of the things that I learned about skin is like when I used to have that big beard here, I'll give you two stories. When I used to have the big beard, man, I used to stroke that damn beard and just like yank on it. I'd be watching TV, watching a video, doing something and just kind of doing this. When the beard was longer, you kind of like, you're stroking it here, but you're almost like yanking on it. Remember when you're yanking on your beard, you're yanking on skin. And then when I cut the beard off, I, I mean, I was like total turkey neck, just like loose skin. I don't have any loose skin now or wrinkles or anything like that. I'm doing the red light therapy and I moisturize like a, like a madman. But I will tell you when I started putting lotion on my neck, it disappeared. So I think I'm going to start putting lotion on my belly to kind of tighten that up a little bit and just not make it so wrinkly. Uh, my wife, while her belly was growing, 
I will tell you that she was pretty damn disciplined about putting cocoa butter on her belly. And it got to the point where I was putting cocoa butter on her belly. And after she gave birth, that belly just kicked right back into gear. Whereas a lot of women, when you're older, when you're older and you date women and you happen to see them like, you know, naked or in a bikini or something like that, they have a, a loose belly and they're embarrassed about their bellies. That just, it's across the board. And it's a thing. And I'm not poking fun at that. It's just a fact. You know, when that belly used to be out to here and then a baby's born, that skin's got to go somewhere. It's got to, it's got to be resilient. And uh, we made a thing where I would rub the cocoa butter on her belly, whatever, and and that really did a great job of just restoring that belly back. I think I'm going to start doing that with myself because as I'm losing weight, the skin is thinner, jigglier, and wrinklier. So I'm going to start putting that on my belly, I think. That's what I'm going to do. It worked here, and it's going to work here, I think. But until then, it's only going to be like shoulder and arm shots, that kind of thing. The overall body fat has to go. Like, right, you know, it, it's hard to lose the fat on your stomach. And then, of course, that layer of fat on your chest. Like, every guy over, what, maybe 40, 45, 50 starts to get like a thicker layer of fat. I mean, like, you even look at like Schwarzenegger now. I don't want to say he's got man boobs, but his chest is in his drawers. You know, it ain't the same kind of chest. So how do you mitigate that? Well, you have to stay working out. You got to be careful of the elasticity of the skin. And just keep a lower level of body fat. And especially the visceral fat. That little tire, spare tire they call it around your, around your waist. Some people call it a muffin top. I know for me it's like right above my belt buckle. But it can be done. And a quick commentary on breakups and divorces. Pre-plan your grief. Have a finite time period where you can cry or have a tantrum, whatever you want to do. And what that does is it eliminates the free-floating sadness where you are just sad 24-7. You know, if someone leaves you, whether it be by their choice or yours, you need to have the funeral. Bury, burn, flush, dispose. No more pining over somebody. No more pining. Don't try to get anyone back. Dude, don't try to get her back. Get you back. Somewhere along the line, you lost you. Get you back. It's not like she went to a convent when she left. Read between the lines there. Now, if it's death, that's different. You can't control the pain, but you can control the suffering. When in doubt, do nothing, but keep the mind busy so it doesn't wander backwards. Remember, eliminate the reverse gear in your life. From now on, you only have drive or neutral in life's transmission. No more reverse. None whatsoever. And think about this. Think about, you know, many of the 12-step programs talk about identifying your triggers don't make decisions when you are halt. H-A-L-T. Halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. When you are hungry, angry, lonely, tired, you are prone to make bad decisions. Learn to identify those things. Don't make phone calls when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Don't, don't go out to a bar when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Don't start swiping for love on dating sites when you are hungry, angry, lonely, tired. You will always make bad decisions when you are hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. And with that, finish your coffee. And I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.